name is Mikey Sklar and I live in Truth or Consequences and I have recently been playing with shipping containers and what we've done at this point is we've bought two half size containers, they're only 20 feet long, where 40 foot is the standard, and I made one into an office and right beside that I made the other into my tool shed. And I have to say I love these containers, they are so inexpensive, they're 12 year old, they're used, they're past their lifetime. And this is one of the best reuses I can think of. And it's actually pretty popular in the state I'm in, New Mexico, to use shipping containers as tool sheds and things like that. Beyond the office and the tool shed, we'll start using them as guest rooms. And so we'll take one and a half containers and put in a bathroom, a bed, a table, some furniture, and our guests would actually stay in these as rooms. Now, I think that these will actually be really comfortable rooms because we're insulating them with a, a pretty high insulating material, or papercrete, that we make here. and. Um, they are uh, going to basically be soundproof and heat proof, cool proof. They'll hold the heat in or keep the hot air, hot sun out. And, like it'll really be an interesting experience, I think. So when I work in my office, I feel like I'm outside. I can see everything going on down the street. We hired someone who had a sprayer, and they just sprayed it white inside. All the rooms will have a non-VOC white paint, like a Sherman Williams or something. And so it basically took half an hour to spray it white. And then I spent a day and a half putting down the bamboo floors. And that's literally all we did to this 12-year-old container. This is a papercrete slab we've made. We used 100 pounds of newspaper. We take out all the glossies, take out all the coupons, just the real newspaper. That gives us the best structure. We're using 100 pounds of paper, 30 pounds of Portland cement, so 30% cement to paper by weight. We also add in a little bit of boric acid. We add a pound of that. And the idea is that if bugs try to live in here or something else, they'll die from eating it. Yeah, so it was like 64 back here. Yeah. Man, it's like it's tremendous. Twice as, twice as high. Yeah. So you can wow. see the insulation value of just 100 yeah. pounds of paper here. These branches sticking out are salt cedar, which is the local pest wood here in town and, and really in the state that the non-indigenous that drinks all our river water. Um, so we use that as our rebar. Normally when people built a tilt-up structure like this, they would put rebar in it um, for standard cement work. But because this is so much lighter, like Wendy and I can actually lift the slab up together. How can we lift? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can lift this slab up on one side. <laughs> it's, it's about 150 pounds, so it's not super light, but if this were concrete, it's probably about four tons. Um, and the salt cedar helps keep the weight down as well, because if this were all rebar, we'd add almost another 100 pounds, just half inch rebar weight. It's a nice way to just use a material that's not wanted here, the salt cedar, and keep our tinsel strength up so this can bend and not snap. It's not like papercrete is new, but what hasn't yet been done is pouring large uh, forms like this. So people make papercrete bricks, like blocks, like very similar to adobe and with a great deal of success and no one really knew for sure we didn't know for sure if this would work so as you can imagine imagine making little blocks curing them stacking them you know adhering them to each other versus pouring an eight foot slab it accelerates everything we have a limited labor force you know us so <laughs> the, the the less steps is really what we were looking for there